Hey everyone, this is Chris. Welcome back to the channel. So I want to have a chat with you guys about career goals, cachet, and uh, movies actually. Um, I want to start a discussion with Jordan Peele. You may know who he is. Uh, he's made three movies now. His third movie just came out called Nope. And um, he's most famously known for the movie Get Out. And it's actually really quite interesting because his career may end up being very, very similar to M. Night Shyamalan, whose first movie was The Sixth Sense. That was one of the Bruce Willis. And the famous quote is, was the icy dead people. We, we, they, we, all, we all know this one. Um, the reason why I, I mention these kind of things is oftentimes, and this is Hollywood, but it can be for anything, um, people will sort of know you by your first big project, okay? And what this does, this builds up a lot of cachet with you, right? Um, think of it this way, here's another one. Uh, let's say someone, and this is very common on YouTube, um, picked Tesla as their very first stock, right? And, and uh, they, they you know, built, picked that, we'll say, four years ago, and um, it ended up being fantastic, which is very, very true. People who you know got into Tesla and YOLO'd on that thing four years ago are, are very, very well off today. Um, however, this is something that goes with Jordan Peele, goes with M.I. Shaman, or say people who've gotten a Tesla. Um, just because you did one good thing doesn't necessarily mean that you're a genius for the rest of your life. Uh, however, people often think that the first thing you do, that's their first impression of you, is who you are and, and who you're, who you're going to be. And what I want you to think about this, how important that is, your cachet, is if when you start to build up cachet early on, always keep fighting to keep that. Always keep fighting to prove that that wasn't your peak. Always keep fighting to prove that wasn't a one-hit wonder. And that's a good way to think about it as well, with thinking about the 1980s, you know, those all, those, I don't know why exactly, why in the 1980s we had so many one-hit wonders where basically bands would come out with like one song and that was it, and they would disappear off the face of the earth. And um, I want you to think about your career in this way as well, is plan for a long career. Yes, it's great to have that one hit, but don't be a one-hit wonder. And one of the ways that you can avoid being a one-hit wonder is to always be learning. Always, always, always be learning. Now, it's certainly true. I'm just keeping it real. It's certainly true that um, you know some people can win the lottery ticket early on in the career and whatever after that, that's all they need to do. <laughs> They've already won the lottery. But oftentimes you'll find with say lottery ticket winners, this is a real thing, um, many of them go broke after a few years because that was they just got lucky and they end up losing a lot of their money, which is kind of a crazy thing if you think about it. Um, this is also something else that's, that's also true is uh, professional athletes. Oftentimes there's a great ESPN series you guys ever saw. I think it's called Broke actually, where they profile star athletes who are making you know, 15, 20 million dollars a year and um, they, they, they get out of the NFL and it, they're like, they're broke, which just seems like so ridiculous. And one of the things is, is because they didn't plan for a long career. And this is sort of why I'm having this discussion with you guys is I want you to plan for a long career. And whenever you do something great, sure, use that cachet, right? Use up that sort of reputation that, that you've built up from that one project that you first started out to advance to your next thing. But don't less rest on your laurels for the rest of your life or the rest of your career. I think it's always important to stay hungry and keep striving to get better. And that's why I mentioned before, always be learning. Because one of the things that I've always been impressed with, and, and we'll go back to Hollywood again, is, is the people. And actually, to be really frank, I, I really admire Tom Cruise. Uh, there's not many, uh, maybe zero, uh, people who I think he might even be his 50s or 60s, who are still in fighter jets, who are still you know, hanging off of buildings, who are still doing all these crazy things that most people in their 20s don't even do. And he's still doing it. And that is very, very difficult for anyone to maintain that high level. But I think, and this is funny because I'm talking about Tom Cruise now, I, I think that's the kind of career that any of us in any field, it's not just movies, uh, should strive to be to where he's always challenging himself to do the next big thing. He's always challenging himself to do something that no one else has ever done before. Because think about it, I mean, for real. Um, he could have just made the first Top Gun, I think it was like 1986, 87, uh, or even like A Days of Thunder, for example, or uh, Born on the Fourth of July. These are old, uh, older movies, but you know, he's, he's been in a lot of great movies and he could just rest on his laurels and run around and, and like, he actually doesn't have an Oscar yet, but you know, wave his awards and, and wave his money around and his 10 wives or whatever he has right now <laughs> and, um, and just live off of that, but he doesn't. And it's funny because people don't really talk about Tom Cruise in terms of career advice, but for, for perfectly frank, um, I think any one of us would, would love to have Tom Cruise's career. Very few people are number one at the box office for like 40 years. Um, and, and I mention this is because I want you to think about, okay, when you're planning your career and you're planning sort of what you're gonna do, don't just think, hey, this is the peak what I'm ever gonna do. And this is something I always tell my wife all the time is I don't want us to ever think, oh, you know, five years ago was our peak, 10 years ago was our peak, 15 years ago was our peak. No, no, no. I always think in terms of life is 
next year is gonna be even better than the year before. And you know what? In two years, there's something gonna be better than the year before. And for people who are sort of feel down and stuff, uh, and stuff like that, you gotta think about your career in terms of what can you do today that will help you reach a new higher peak? Or say in the stock market, how can you reach all time highs? How can you get there, right? How can you keep going further in your career? And, and one of the things that I, I mentioned when I started with the say, uh, Jordan Peele or M. Night Shyamalan, is oftentimes what happens is that, again, their first movie's really great and after that they go downhill. And there could be any number of reasons. One is, it's very difficult for any artist out there to have uh, more than one great idea. That's perfectly frank, it's really difficult. Uh, I'll give you a simple example. Um, uh, J.K. Rowling, uh, she has acknowledged, and this is something I always like to talk about with students and I'm sharing with you, that she'll probably never write another Harry Potter again. And that's totally fine, right? Um, it's very, very difficult to write a book that, you know, <laughs> sells a bazillion copies and everyone's reading it and they're waiting in line for, for you know, days to watch it. And she's really come to accept that that was my peak and, you know, I can't capture that. That is a very unusual case though, okay? Um, the other one would be another similar one, which is she, he took it oppositely, oppositely, is that a word? Um, was Michael Jackson actually. Uh, he peaked at Thriller. Man, Thriller was an awesome album. You guys know this this album as well. Um, his next one was just okay. I mean, I mean, it wasn't terrible. I mean, that was the bad album. And I can't remember what the ones were after that. But one of the psychological problems that he had is that he couldn't accept that Thriller was probably the best it's gonna be. And that was a very, 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 very unusual circumstance, the time and the place, etc. And so I guess I'm giving you two different messages here, but I think they're all related. Is One is keep striving to be the best, right? Keep striving to improve your career. But do understand that there are some times in your life that you did get lucky uh, because we were in the right time and the right place. You wrote uh, what people wanted to read, you sang what people wanted to hear. But, you know, most of us aren't J.K. Rowling or Michael Jackson, perfectly frank. I do think, however, that sort of the dream of becoming the Tom Cruise of having this career for 60 years is something that we should all strive for. Um, and, and now that I'm thinking about it out loud, and you guys can see this, I did this in a single tank and I'm just, you know, work these out in my head for myself. I, I could see how if you're, say, a perfectionist, let's use the example of Michael Jordan, is, you know, you win a championship and, like, why not win more? Whereas some players are, like, win a championship and then, like, just run around and just, like, wave that single trophy around. I, I think I think the people who do really well, and I'm just talking about Michael Jordan now, or, or you know, we'll do Tom Cruise, uh, are the ones that are just never satisfied, right? You know, Yes, I, I have been a champion, I guess, five time or six time NBA champion, I'm talking about Michael Jordan here. Um, but why not seven, right? Why not? I'm still young, I'm still healthy. Uh, I still feel like I wanna play. Um, I think too, the other thing too is, and this is kind of way down the, the, the career and I'm talking with you guys just casually. Um, sometimes people ask you to why I quit being a professor. Um, for me, it, it wasn't like that there wasn't much more to do, uh, I felt like. I wanted to do other things and I wanted to travel and I wanted to work in the film industry a little more opposed to just teaching it, right? And, and I think for, for myself, you know, I, I probably in terms of teaching, my, my most exciting time was in, was in China, that was in Beijing. But that was like in, you know, 07, 08, that was a long time ago already. And, you know, I don't ever like to think, oh my God, that's, that's the peak of my, my teaching career, it'll never be better than that. I don't like to think in that way because I... I wanted you to, to know that your life can always transform and there are always can be opportunities to do new things if you're looking for it. I'm just sharing with you right now, uh, I didn't think I would be walking around <laughs> doing YouTube videos every morning talking about career. Uh, how, how could a person even you know imagine that? It didn't exist before. And I, I think in this regard to where we're talking about multiple things at the same time, you know, managing the peak of your career, managing your cachet, is always be willing to change uh, when you need to, uh, be willing to accept that, you know, the, the world will, will give you different opportunities and it's up to you whether or not you want to take it. Um, I myself, and it's something I always advise anyone out there, is if whenever you get an opportunity, just say yes. And this is for any number of things, just say yes. Why? Because you don't know when the opportunities will ever come back. Uh, and and this, this is the same for, you know, something like, well, let's use a Jordan Peele example. Hey. You know, he's resting, he, he made a first great movie. The third one's maybe not that gonna be that great. I read the reviews, I haven't seen it yet, but, um, but people keep asking him to do stuff and just say yes. Uh, however, 
in regards to him, I think it'll be tough for him to stay hungry like the way he was when he, would his, when he did his first movie. And I think this happens to a lot of people because essentially um, your, I don't know if I say I would say resting on your laurels per se, just your your third movie is not not as going to be as good as your first one because the first one you you worked you know 10 years or whatever to just get that thing made and then that was kind of your baby and you didn't ever think it was going to work and finally oh my god it worked and and you you put a lot more of your heart and soul into it it's very difficult to maintain that high level of dedication and drive after you've had that first thing of success and that's sort of why i wanted to talk with you guys about maintaining a high level and, and not thinking that the past is the peak um you know, it's it's funny because I going back to the Beijing thing, talking about my own career, thinking, oh my God, you know, uh, 2007, 2008 was the peak of my career, right? Got to teach at Tsinghua University. And um, I, I don't like to think that way because like, for example, um, my wife and I, we, we're, we're talking about, okay, uh, now that we're doing the YouTube thing to share with you guys, uh, how can we be the best at YouTube that we could possibly be? You know, what can we do different every single day? Um, what content can I make that are different? How can I learn new? I do this. I, I try to learn new computer graphics every day, etc. And and I guess this goes back to my first point was this: always be learning, always be trying to better yourself, and always challenge yourself to see how far you can go. So I'll leave with that. I know I gave you guys a bunch of mixed messages today, um, but life is complicated. You know, I mean, everyone has a different pathway to where they want to go, and I think the best way to think about any of these things is just keep pushing forward and do what makes you happy and do what's right. So anyway, I hope this is helpful and useful for you. I'd love to have these chats with you guys. It helps my psyche, my psyche as well. <laughs> so thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.